Hi, this is Joe Boland, and welcome to learning about VisualBasic.net. And the last series of videos, we've been looking at a text editor project that we've been working on, and we're going to be focusing on the find, find next, and a replace area of our code. But before we do that, we're going to have to deal with a certain problem that you might not know about, and I want to demonstrate it to you and show you how we overcome that problem with a special designing method. Well, before we get started, let's go out and take a look at where the uh, location is for our code. So you can go out and study the code after the video. It's at pastebin.com slash u slash jboh. And there you'll see not only the code for this particular text editor series, but you'll see other code that I've written for other videos out there. Also, you'll see the link to Bolin Presents at YouTube. There's a link, and you'll see all the videos that I've written and I produced out there. And then also you'll see at the very top of the uh, PowerPoint image right now, uh, Imgur is where uh, you can go to see the main form for this text editor project. So that if you're developing this for yourself and want to follow along, you can take a look at what it looks like. Uh, you can see the actual code that I'm using at Pastebin. And so you might want to pause your video at this point in time and write down the links. And then afterwards, go out and study the code. And I highly recommend you really study the code. If you see anything in the code that you don't understand, go out to Microsoft Development Net Network, MSDN, and you'll be able to find information about that code. Well, let's get into our project itself. So I'm going to bring up the Visual Studio and the Windows Designers up right now with our main form. And I have the menu strip exploded a little bit right now to show you where we are. And here we're going to be working in this area to find, find next and replace. And we'll see the problem that we're going to have through this section if we don't code for a special designing pattern that we need. Let's go to the code behind it. And you'll see uh, that the code uh, I've exploded out in the region area here of our um, editing section of the menu. And we have uh, very simply a series of code that I'm going to uh, work on. We'll do it in the find area. And I'm going to, uh, first of all, uh, show you um, a problem that we're going to possibly have. I'm going to bring in some code right now. And I'm going to paste over this code that I have here. And we're going to look at a typical Windows form. It's called a modeless form. Up to this point, we've been using the show dialog method of a uh, form, usually bringing up a uh, dialog that, like the font dialog uh, to enter in information. And then we hit OK and return back to our program. That's called a modal form. We're going to be working now with what's called a modeless Windows form. And it operates a little bit differently. When we bring up the form, uh, both the mainline form as well as the form we just called will be on our screen at the same time. And depending upon where our cursor's at in which form, that form which has focus will be where the code will be running from. So we're going to see right now we're going to be using the show method. I have just a generic form that I'm going to show you in a second that I've coded. Uh, and let's take a look at that. So I'm going to click on my generic form. And you'll see that the generic form we're looking at is just a very simple form that I have with a label on it saying it's a generic modeless Windows form. And we have the close button, which will do the ME close. And of course, during the process, too, if I click on the red button up above, it'll operate and close out the form as well. And we can code during that time for the form closing event if we need to. But this is just a basic a Windows form. There's nothing else much behind it other than that. So let's see this one run first so you can get an idea of how um, this will look. So let me uh, start this run. And I've got the form up. And I'm going to come into where we have the code that we put in in the find event. And you'll see our generic modeless window form has come up on our screen. And if I click on the mainline part of the form, 
it has focus. If I click on the generic form, it has focus. And as I said, depending upon which form I'm in, the code behind it will be running. Also, we have a little bit of a problem with this one. What if I come over here to the main form and click the find again? Well, now I've got two instances of our generic modeless window form. If I keep doing that, I'll keep getting another one and another one here. I'll do it again. Now, this is not what I want in this program. I want one instance of the form, and we need to learn how to code around it. Right now, all these forms, depending on where my cursor would be, would have focus. That form's code would become active. So I do not want to keep getting new forms up there. Even if I close out one, I still got a number of other forms available to me. And I don't want that. I want one instance of the form, one class. So let's see how we code for that. OK. Well, let me go back to our main forms code. We're going to change this code here to, instead of calling a generic form, a special form. Basically, it'll look just the same, but the code behind it is a little bit different. And so I'm going to grab the code and pull it in and overlay that that we've had here. Now we're going to do exactly the same, but it's going to be a different form. Now, what I want to show to you is that in our code here, what we're doing each time is we're declaring a form name. And this could be any name. And I just called it A in front of the form uh, to make certain that it's understood it's a different form. And the form I'm creating is the class singleton form. In the last one, we did dim a generic form as new generic form. Here we're doing it, though, with a special method to create that form. And I've created a method in the code called getInstance. So when I come into this line of code, instead of just doing uh, dim a singleton form as new singleton form, I'm going to do it by way of a special method called getInstant. And that will initialize my form. And then, having the form initialized, then I'll issue the show method. So let's see this one work and see the difference. Let me minimize this back down, and we'll start. And there's our editor up. This time, we're going to see the Singleton Patterns modulus form. And there it is. We've got one form. I'll do it again, just like we did before. But we should not get a second form. We should only stay with the form we have. And we do. And once again, depending on which form I'm in, it'll have focus in the code behind that form will run. But I can keep clicking the Find button over and over again, but it's the same instance I'm working with all the time. Well, then that's what we want for our find, find next, and replace area of this code. So let's see what this singleton coding pattern is so we can understand how to create one instance of a class. Let's go back now and take a look at this in terms of looking at the code for the singleton form. So I'm going to click on the code behind it, and I'm going to change the font size or uh, screen size here to make it a little bit bigger for you to see. And I'm going to bring up our screen how we did that. What I'd like to do is focus your attention to the my instant variable. What we're declaring is what's called a shared variable. In C sharp it would be called a static variable. And it's a private one that only this class can see and but it's shared. And it is of the same class name as my class that I'm working with. So I'm going to create an instance of my class. And right now, coming into this code, it is null or nothing. Then I also have another uh, line of code here. This particular one is just creating an object that I called a lock that's read only. And we'll see that is coded in to protect for thread safety. So we have multiple threads in our class. Uh, this will protect the code that we're working with and keep us with that one instance. So 
the main part is this one line of code up here private shared my instance as the class setting it to nothing or null then we come down to what's called the constructor of the class now many Windows forms do not have the public sub new in it uh, coded directly but it actually inherits it from its Windows form class but we can't put that in and it actually is run every time we instantiate that class this is true of other classes as well we have this pro uh, public sub new well I'm changing the public sub new to a private sub new and that will keep it private and only this area of code can be called from within the class therefore instead of just uh, allowing anybody to call uh, the sub new and instantiating in the class it can only be called within the code now let me skip over some of the code below and then come on down to the area where we actually instantiate the class here we have our function that I've created now we could use this also as a property but I'm using a uh, function here and once again this is a public shared function uh, and I called it get instant and the instant uh, that I'm going to be returning is the actual class of this that I'm working with in this case I called it the singleton form now let me skip over the uh, issue of the thread safety and come right into the area where we're looking at our instantiating the code what I'm doing is as I come in the first time that I run and try to call this method my instant will have uh, not be initialized it will be nothing and at that point I will instantiate it with the new and then using the class name that I'm working with uh, initializing that to my instant so it's within this class that I then call the sub new area and initialize the class only through coming through the uh, method that I've created here can I instantiate the class because I've made the constructor private now if it's already been instantiated and it's already out there and I try to start and do another um, form or class what's going to happen is I'm going to skip this line of code and return the previously created class that I already have so I'm returning my instance back to the user so as many times as I come in here I'll come back and just return this instant only to the user now the thread lock the sync lock and having a little object here is to provide thread safety so anytime we're coding uh, a singleton pattern for um, a class uh, this is an area to protect for multiple thread issues so we're always working with one instance of our class that we're working with now let's take a look at the other parts that I skipped over uh, we had uh, the closing event remember I could click on the little red button on our form and instead of doing a uh, exit out immediately what I'm going to do is say okay I'm going to handle the closing event in this form but instead of closing it out I'm going to hide it because this one I'm going to be using over and over again and I really do not need to recreate it all the time uh, I can use the code that's there also I will retain the uh, variables that I have initialized within it and then in the button that I have where I have the close button instead of doing me close I'm doing me hide so we're hiding the form and then when I re-show it it'll come back alive again and once again if I try to instantiate it I'm only going to do it one instance of the code so let's take a look at that once again running oh, now I'll hit start and we'll just bring it up real quickly and I'll hit it find we'll have that one code up I'm going to do it again now you'll notice too I'm going to move this a little bit I'm going to close it out well actually I'm hiding it so when I do this again that code comes alive again exactly where I had placed it uh, it's the same instant it just now shows 
versus uh, when I close it out, I just hit it. So this is the way we'll code our codes in for the find, find next, and replace in the next videos that I'll be showing you. The single decoding pattern is a very important part of learning how to code uh, in our program. Many times we have a class where we only want one instance of it. For example, if I had a class that I was using to log um, events on, I don't want every user to have a separate logging file. I'll have one class and only one file, and all the users will use that one class to do their logging with. In this case, we're using a form, but the form is also a class called the Windows Forms class. So we're keeping one instance of it while we're working with it. And in this case, we're hiding it uh, versus closing it out because we're going to be using it over and over again. It's going to keep popping up. But nevertheless, as long as that form has been instantiated one time, it's the only form that I'll be using. I won't have multiple forms. And that's an important thing to remember as you're coding. You'll be using that singleton pattern many times in your programming to solve things. Now, I used a method, but you can also code that as a read-only property approach as well. Uh, but that's an individual desire. I like to use the method on that coding. So until next time, get your hands dirty in the code. Go out to pastebin.com and take a look at things. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up on YouTube and take care.